he wouldn't even even know. Like a lot of people don't know that I was pretty Willie. A lot of people don't know that the records that they had their babies by was built by the guy that they now say hallelujah to. It's really unique how God can switch you up and nobody know. I'm actually trying to bridge the gap between both of them worlds because we just got the, the rights back to my old music. So go stream. Come on, Praise come on, rights. Oh, bye. Hey. You know. You did good. Okay. You did okay. good. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. You hey, know, man. motherfucker, swim ahead. team. Yes, T, you came up from this day. <laughs> I am Rashawn Ali, everybody's home girl, everybody's favorite soror, the cool soror, representing the ATL and the east side of the cater. What's happening? Okay, here we go. It's the cool soror podcast, hosted by me, Rashawn Ali. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome to a very special edition of the Cool Store Podcast. I'm your host, Rashawn Ali, where we get to explore the stories of women and men and black Greek letter organizations. And this season has been full of the brothers that rock that red or the crimson and the cream. Yeah. And today we are joined by media mogul, uh, inspirational speaker, just all around good brother, Willie Moore Jr. I'm so glad to be here. Listen. And hey, you look so amazing. Thank you. I said it off camera. I wanted to make sure that it was documented. You wanted to document it and say yeah. it on camera. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that they knew to acknowledge what okay. was happening. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I will uh, echo those sentiments about you, sir. <laughs> the hat, I the appreciate jacket, it. the glasses, yeah. the jeans, and even how the t-shirt Fits on your chest. Come on, man. We try to we, do it. We, we the necklace. Come on, man. We trying to do it. We from St. Louis. We trying to put that drip out here, shout You know you what, what I'm saying? talking about? <laughs> but... <laughs> Don't, I'm just playing. Don't bring it out. Don't bring it out. It's all good. Don't bring we it right out. here. You know, you you know, you, you, you're tapping into your old spirit. No, I literally, I literally used to tell you every time when we were at another show, I was just like, I just think you like the biggest star in the world. Oh my God, thank like, you. Like to be honest, like I would literally watch you and the way you could do teleprompter, and then of course, like I am a guy who can please everybody in the room and I could be going through so much. So there would be times I would come on the show, I was just like, Oh, she's going through a lot. I can feel it. But then I would see you just navigate the room. And I was like, that is the true essence of what a star is to be able to navigate through some of the toughest waters and still be exactly who God has called them to be. So like, I'm always a fan. When I seen this on my calendar, I was supposed to actually be in DC today again, because they wanted to speak me to speak at another thing. And I said, if we told Rashawn, yes, then our yes is our yes. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. Like just cause they got an extra little few dollars. Like, I mean, the integrity of who you are and what I'm attempting to do and build, I don't know what the future looked like. I would never do that. I was like, she's actually a personal friend. But when they start seeing numerics, they ultimately like, you did great yesterday. Guess what? <laughs> they want to bring you back. When? Tomorrow. But you have a podcast thing. But we can just ask them like, nah, that's like, nah. Wow. That my, they're my people right there. Thank they're you. They're my people. So I love I you and I thank God you. for you. Yeah. Listen, I think that when you, you recognize what you saw in me, did yeah. you see yourself? Um, I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Um, and I don't know if therapy has happened for you or what oh, yes, have it, you. It, you know what I mean? Deep. Yeah. Okay, dope. So yeah. because you're doing therapy or whatever, like what I've learned is when you become so I lost my record deal when I was twenty three years old. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like we signed a one point two million dollar deal, which was like extreme a lot when you were a kid, and then I faced that failure early. So when I get into opportunities, I just want to make sure everybody good. And I see other artists who will come in and be like assholes. And I would be like, oh, you'll never keep a job. That's terrible. And I see people cater to them a whole lot more. And I was like, yo, like, is there any value in being a humble, good oh person my, or what? Oh or, my you know God. What I mean? Yes. And it's like, you're the first person that people will take away because they know you won't like rock the boat or whatever. And so like going through counseling, not that I've become a person who's just going to be a total asshole on set, but I'm okay with who I am. Like yeah. I'm totally free in the person that I am. I realize I ain't everybody cup of, uh, cup of tea. Me neither. But I'm somebody cup of coffee. So I only talk to coffee drinkers. Oh, yeah, you know, that's crazy. I, I talked to, uh, I took Rodney Perry's, um, I love him. I got to, we got to get him on the show, like as a cool people um, segment. But um, yeah. I took his improv class during the pandemic and he said, Rashawn, you are such a star. He was like, star, but it's man. like, he was like, people like me and you, it takes longer because we've done things right. Yeah. And that we're humble. Have you found that for your life, even though you were signed at 23, but just yeah. that, that, that humility that you have, do you feel like the road has been longer for you? 
I think it's been longer, but I think my character has always been catch, been trying to catch up with my gift. Ooh, your you know character I mean? has been trying to catch up with your gift. Yeah, like a lot of people have this beautiful gift, but their character doesn't like really represent how big that gift is, if you mm -hmm, would. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, being so I was adopted. I never met anybody in my biological family. So I literally perfected performance at a very young age. You know, I, I literally the other day, it was a Sunday and um, I was sitting with my seven year old and my 14 year old. And it just it's just like Holy Spirit told me, like, he's seven years old. That's when you found out you were adopted. Mm -hmm. And I was like, OK, that's dope. What I'm supposed to do with that? And it was just in my heart to ask him if I gave him the scenario that I was in at seven years old, how would you answer as a seven year old? Because I know I didn't answer correctly when I found out I was adopted. Mm -hmm. And so I, I gave him the scenario. What if dad and mom come in abruptly one day or somebody makes fun of you and you come in and you and they say, OK, so the jig is up. We're not really your biological parents, but we love you and the Lord and all that. And, and which was really, really good. But at seven years old, that's so confusing. I was in a place in my life where I literally was looking at it like, did everybody else know? Yeah. Like, did Lisa know? Did Angie know? Did Louise know? Did the neighbors know? Was all this a big, like, did y'all paint a picture that I could live in safely and not really give me the true opportunity to know who I was? But at seven years old, I didn't say that. I just said, okay. And I learned to live in my imagination. And I learned how to perform. And I asked my seven-year-old, I said, like, what would you say? He said, give me a moment. Took him about five minutes. He said, at seven years old, he said, I would have told him that I love them. But right now I'm hurting. And if you could help me through my hurt a little bit, I would be okay. But I love you, but I'm hurting. And I said, son, you just healed me today Ooh. because you're more courageous and more brave than I ever was at seven years old. And so when I look at that, I realized that that particular moment in my life, I, I perfected performance. I know how to be all things to all people. But I'm learning now that I can't be all things to all people without considering myself. Mm. And so that's where I am now in my life. And I tell you, it's so much freedom in it. Like I probably did more acquisitions and I probably influenced more people in 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 this in this person who I am than I was ever able to do when I was performing, attempting to be something that I wasn't naturally. When did, when did the performance end? When was it over? When did you say cut? Um, About six months ago, going through counseling. Wow. Like going you were through, performing that long? Man, all my life. I never cut the lights off. Like, I never cut the lights off. Like, my guy, he told me, you know, Michael Jackson, he was a great performer. But there was this little moment between the stage and the bus. And Mike would walk past there and he would go to the bus. But there would be fans still out there. But the performance was over. So Mike didn't do the moonwalk to the bus he just waved at those people and smiled and he got on the bus and he rested. And so I'm learning now how to rest. I get like six to eight hours a day worth of sleep. If it don't happen this day, <laughs> then it'll happen tomorrow. And I, I leave room for God. So I'm literally resting in God, knowing that the parts that I can't do, he can. He can. So I'm, I'm so peaceful now. It's so cool. And I'm getting younger. Like, I feel like I'm Man, getting younger. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so much, I feel so vibrant now. Right, you know? right, right. Because when you're performing, it's exhausting. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like you have preached an entire word in the first 10 minutes of this interview. Um, God. OK. Well, cheers to you. Che cheers. 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 Ha yeah. Happy, happy cool story show. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> my favorite. AK, well, one of my favorite. AKs. Okay, I don't want to say that because I can just feel like this going to go viral. Right. <laughs> And Keisha from Old Miss gonna be like, I thought you, you had was, said you, I was your I favorite. Was, I had bought black and miles for you when you was oh, online. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Like they wow. was on the black and miles. So take me back to St. Louis, like where you were born and where you once you found out kind of who you were at at, at, at seven years old and trying to figure this person out. Um how did you navigate finding out that these people who you call mother and father weren't the people that quote unquote birthed you? Yeah. Um, I never just thought about it again. And that's where trauma started. I lived in my imagination. I just imagined what it took to be in every circle. So the reason why I'm able to be such a great radio host and a host is because I used to watch Johnny Carson and think, could he be my cousin? 
And I would imagine that Johnny was my cousin and I could just do it because I thought Johnny was just so cool. If you ever look at my new pictures or even my old pictures, I always wear a black suit, white shirt. And sometimes I take the uh, the little tie off because yeah. Johnny wore the black suit most of the time with the white. So that was like my guy. Um, and I could literally mimic anything that I seen. Like I just became a performer. Like I can mimic oh anything. You, you and so, <sighs> yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, keep going. Yep. So, so I learned that. And it just so happened I was in an environment with a lot of hood niggas from St. Louis. Like I grew up in Berkeley, Missouri, where the median income was $17,000. So I grew up around the hustlers. And so although I didn't have the courage or the bravery to jump off the porch like many of my friends did, like I was heavily engulfed in the environment. And most of them really respected me because my parents were older. So there weren't a lot of fathers in the neighborhood. So my daddy became the father to a lot of these guys who like, boy, you don't want to take your ass to jail, jail, stupid for you. All got to do is go to school. You know, he would, they would listen to my dad and I was Big Willie's son. Mm. And so I was just always the, like I was a lot. My best friend was older. So they would come to me for a whole lot of wisdom. But, you know, staying in that environment, of course, you end up doing some of the things in the neighborhood. So I didn't have this beautiful church background like everybody else did. We went to church on Sunday, period. And that was just something we did, not something that we lived. Because mm -hmm. on Monday, I was watching Dav and them drive, you know, on 18-inch wheels and hydraulics and all that. And I'm in the car with the dope boys hoping one day I could find a way to live the way they live. And, you know, I doubled and dabbled in the street. Not in the not in the sense of I was trying to be the next kingpin, but I was a strategist. I always knew how to keep these guys out of jail. These were my friends. Like, man, if you move like this, you're going to move like that because my daddy was older. Um, and then I was just amazing student as well because I wanted to impress my mom and dad. I had a 3.5 GPA, yeah. became a state champion in, in, in Missouri as a as a track guy. And I knew that that was my way to get out of the neighborhood. It was only four white people in my high school. And then I ended up going to the whitest PWI in the world. Ole Miss. Like, who you go to Ole Miss? Rebels? I went to the Rebels. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was unique. Like, they, like I remember sitting in the library and I put that Ole Miss hat on. You could, you, you could see. You ever been to a bingo game? Uh-huh. And then bingo. And then somebody said, bingo. And right. you hear that, oh. Yeah. I was like, it's free. How y'all say, oh, to Ole Miss? Um, <laughs> like, oh, it was like Texas, KU, Mizzou, Ole Miss, and like another school. And I pick up the Ole Miss hat. In, in Did you run track there? I ran track at Ole Miss. Wow. Run, Negro, run. Um, right. But I, I did that and I put the hat on and they was like, why would you go to Ole Miss? And I was like, you know, my dad, he grew up in Mississippi and he, you know, he's 90 now. Um, but I was like, he couldn't go to school because of the color of his skin. So not only will I go to Ole Miss, I'll go for free because he couldn't. Oh, yeah. So, so, so that is so delicious. Um, when you got into the music, you say you were in the cars with these guys and but you were still kind of trying to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. How did you get into the music world with the with the St. Mm -hmm. Lunatics? And, and how, how did that even happen? Because every dope man wanted to be a, a music they, guy. Every, right, every dope right. man got a, a, a studio on their right, basement. Right. <laughs> You know, mean, I'm doing music. Yeah, you, you know I'm doing the music. You know I'm doing the music. You know that's the transition from the street. <laughs> right. So, you know what I mean? When you transition from the streets, every dope boy. And then, like, when Master P hit, like, it was like, oh, we really could do this. Because, you know, we knew that he was a neighborhood guy. Right. Um, And, you know, it just was a local studio. I just always loved music. I was singing the choir only on Sunday. Not living the life. But I like to see my mama cry when I sing. He keeps on making the way for me. She yeah. cry. And I'm like, oh, yeah, because you're looking for validation. I'm an adoptee. I want to be, I want to be received. I want to be loved. Um, and so I end up doing a record with the Dope Boys when I was 12, signed as a what we call baby gangsters. And I signed with each, uh, French Down Records and we was on the pop. Right. So, Willie, I want to go back because you, you tapped on something. And usually as a journalist, when you tap on certain things, you hear certain things that you want to go to yeah. uh, as a great listener, as you know, um, you said you did not feel free or become or, or the, the performance didn't end yeah. until six months ago. Yeah. And when, when something is that clear, mm -hmm. you remember the day when mm -hmm. you were free yeah. from the performance. Yeah. Do you remember that day? I don't actually remember the day, but I remember when I was okay with me. Um, I was in the gym because it's kind of like my regimen. No matter what I do at night, no matter what I eat, I'm going to be in the gym. A lot of people think it's just to like try to look good. But I got a three-year-old baby girl 
that's like you can kind of tell her potential. She gonna be a nice looking girl, like, right? And built up. So I'm like, I need to stay healthy, if you would, man. So I'm always setting borders for little young Paisley. I love her so much. Um, but I just remember being in the gym, and I just put my head up, and I was like, I can no longer pretend to be like this perfect example of guy. That's too much pressure for me. Mm. I can only be who I am. And my imperfections are good. It's going to take a positive and a negative charge for any battery to move any car. Right. It's going to take a positive and negative charge for any battery to move any apparatus. And if I'm going to have the level of success and the level of influence in the earth, I got to be okay with also being the villain as well. And that, that was a hard thing for me because I never thought in my life that I would have things in my life. You know, people get on my Instagram page and a lot of people have stalkers and bullies it's all love. Like, it's just love. Like it's an environment of love. And I, and I know that the Lord kind of protected me from what I couldn't take. But now I understand, now that I've understand it's a positive and a negative that, you know, I can take whatever comes at me because I've been through more than I ever thought that I would be through, whether, you know, it's meeting my biological family and learning the things that are chasing me. Cause I always look at what I'm chasing like, I'm going to chase the, you know, I'm going to chase this, I'm going to chase that. But I didn't know alcoholism and cigars and women not womanizing and all that stuff was chasing me, too. So all the little idiosyncrasy stuff that I used to deal with and struggle with, I got a chance to see it in its most purest form. So pride makes an excuse. Humility makes the adjustment. So I started making those proper adjustments. You keep dropping these nuggets that I really need to write down. Mm -hmm. um, pride? Pride going to always make an excuse. And humility. Humility going to say, dang, you might be right. Let me go ahead and make that adjustment. And so those are the rules that I came. My daddy 90, so it's not me. Like, I grew up with the, the wisest man ever. Like, my dad was 50 when he adopted me. Right. So I, I wasn't like the other kids running around. I don't want to talk to you, OG. That was my dad. Like, so I'm just sitting there just kind of gleaming from every word. And they didn't have television. They didn't have a lot of radios in Mississippi as a sharecropper. So the only thing they had for entertainment was conversation, communication, and beautiful stories. And so that's how I became a master storyteller. That's why they paid me thousands of dollars to go out and tell my adoption story, thousands upon thousands of dollars to create documentaries that create stories. Like, I'm a storyteller. And so when I look at my upbringing, like, it was the most beautiful thing for me, like, because my dad taught me, taught me a whole lot. So when I got into even my in the performance, moment, even in the performance. Yeah. After the seven year old conversation. Yeah. You still call your upbringing beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. Because whoever I became, they catered to him. Ah, in the, even in, in, the in the performance. Okay. Yeah. Willie's Michael Jackson today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Go get him the little glove or whatever, whatever he wanted to do, because they knew that I was attempting to figure out my reality. And so I think I'm be I've become a really great parent because I'm OK with their imagination. I actually enjoy it. Like I don't stifle, you know, my seven year old. I love him to life. Princeton, um, he's a strong will young man. Like he's strong. He asks questions about everything. So for you, it might seem sassy to you. You like, son, hey, sit in this this chair. But he may want to sit in that chair. But he's going to ask you why I got to sit in that chair. Right. But he really wants to know. and But he wants you to say, I need you out of the camera shot. He needs a reason. He needs a reason. like, But he's not being sassy. And so I don't let nobody take that out of him. If that's the way his little brain works, I'm like, God going to use that. Did y'all stop hollering at my baby because he asked you a question? If you're not intelligent enough to give him a proper answer, just skedaddle. Like, don't do my kids that way. Exactly. And I have taken on, my husband and I have taken on the same thing. Like, we allow them to question. Yeah. We allow them to ask um, why in a way that's not, a quote, disrespectful in the whole black world. Yeah. You know, but I wasn't able, my mom said I couldn't go to film school. <laughs> and, 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 and I was 21. Uh -huh. I never questioned why until I was 44. Mm. OK, I didn't ask that question because what they said went. We did not have an opportunity to question. Yeah. But I think. People like us mm -hmm. who have taken on the ability to say these children are human beings mm -hmm. and they have inquisitive minds. So let them ask. And black folks always feel like, oh, you oh, you disrespect me. Don't you disrespect me. I'll slap the shit out of you. No, <laughs> like, no. let them ask a question. Because it's just a question. Because they just want to know the answer. I always tell them, stay curious. Because that's curious. what got me, that's, that's what's getting me in the rooms now. 
you know, I just did like it's this dope producer and director guy that everybody knows. And most people like when I told people that I was going to be with him, they automatically said, you're going to get a role. You get a role. I'm like, I don't want to get a I mean, if that's dope. If that happens, like I produce films, I produce television, I produce movies, I produce music, I produce radio shows. I want to do this for other people. So how do I do this at a high level? I was like, you mind if I carry your bags? He's like, come on, man. You Willie Moore Jr. You know, and I picked up his bag. Right. And I was like, I was serious. I want to know what you know. I want to, like, I know how to work a camera. Like, I've been acting since I was seven. Right. I can be any role you need me to be, but I don't understand the structure of how you've created this amazing team. So, you know, that's the humility, boy. I interviewed Kevin Lyles at Radio One years ago, and I always tell this story, but I always like to reiterate it. Mm-hmm. Kevin Lyles said in an interview, in an interview with him, um, I don't even know what I asked him to prompt this response. He was like, you never get too big to do the little things. No. And when I tell you, I carry that with me yeah. all the time. And another person that gave me the best advice of my life, life is um, Wayne Brown. He's uh, now resting in heaven. Um, former general manager of Radio One. Mm-hmm. He brought me into his, uh, his office. I don't know if he saw that I was kind of getting in the world ish. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was, you know, in the club getting money. You know what I mean? This was when radio was like popping, popping. popping, Right. Wayne Brown said to me, he said, whatever you do, Rashawn, in this business, don't get lost. That and those two statements have literally carried me my entire career. Do you have a piece of advice that that sustains you that somebody gave you? If you do, what is it? I don't think I have a, um, do I have a piece of advice? I don't think I have a piece of advice, um, but I do have my mother and my father's eyes. You know, um, I never wanted to do anything that would disappoint them. And then I realized in my freedom, there's nothing that I can do to disappoint them, but just because I'm centered in what I want to do. And so I will always see their eyes when, you know, like when I was getting a tattoo, I got my first tattoo at 13 years old. 13? Yeah, I was 13. Who did that? They wrote the law. So, so here the thing is, we got some Indian ink from um, from home <laughs> from the uh, shop class, and then like I grew up in a neighborhood full of bloods. So I walk in what we call the shack over Marlo and them house. We go down in the basement. Marlo Price them getting CK. That's for Crip Killer, right? And then John and or somebody was getting blood on their chest, and then somebody somebody else got the big B on their hand, and they was like, "What you getting blood?" I was like, "I'm gonna get Lil Will." I just want Lil Will right there. Just give me Lil Will. Lil Will, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Just one L, though. So it looked like Lil Will. That's oh all I God. had, right? And so I ended up doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I I don't even know where I'm going with this story. Don't Let worry. me just shut up. Don't it worry. just made me laugh so bad. Right. And and, and I just that was like the only time that I really disappointed mom and dad. Because my mom, that was when age was like so big. There weren't like right. tours and Magic Johnson didn't miraculously come up with nothing. Right. Um, and my mom was like, You down there letting them boys stick on you? I walked in. <laughs> I walked you gonna in. get that age. You gonna get the age. What the needle clean, you know. Right. What the needle clean? <laughs> Lord willing done caught the AIDS. I'm just trying to get the what kind of ink is it? Lord have mercy. And then I'm preaching I'm praying over he, you. He down there with the gang members, you know. I'm like, that's John and Marlo and them. They just turned gang members, but they doing something. You know I mean? They still good, man. They Mom. still good. You remember Marlo? Yeah. yeah. And um but that was the only time that I didn't see their eyes. <laughs> Cause I did what I wanted to do. Right. But you know, when you grow up with older parents and, you know, I realize now that my life has just been so consumed with trying to make sure that they had the best life ever. So here I am now financially in a place where I can pretty much do whatever I want to do with the exception of buy my plane that I want in Jesus name. Which camera I'm supposed to look at? This I'm going to get right a plane here. and y'all don't even got to, I ain't no, going to be no GoFundMe. I just can't do this commercial the way because they be late sometime and I'm a really stickler and I want to get home to my daughter. But I say all that to say, <laughs> like, I do all this stuff and my mom and them won't move out the neighborhood. They still won't. But I learned now that that was their accomplishment. They were oh. two ex sharecroppers who came to St. Louis with marginal education and literally accomplished something off their hard earned money. The best that I can do is send landscapers and people to fix things up because I feel like if I take them out of their accomplishment, then I could I could stifle stifle their life length. You know what I mean? 
And so, you know, we got creative and started building, you know, buying around and make sure that the neighbors would be extremely different or what have you. And we were able to create a narrative in the neighborhood that was kind of close to how I grew up. I wouldn't let the dope boy move next door. If the house was for sale, we would get it. Right. And, um, if, right. The, if the land over there for sale, we'll get it. If the house across the street, we'll get it. So we built this beautiful ecosystem for my mother and my father. But they like navigate. They nav- Like I still see their eyes every day. So even when I'm making hard decisions, I look at my dad and my dad always tell you the difference between me and you is that we both good guys, but I'm not a nice guy. You a nice guy. Wow. Yeah. Nice guy. Take anything and try to make it right. I'm I, I'm the bad man. He still <laughs> says that. I'm a bad man. I don't do all that. He 90 years old. Shit, I tell you, man, I ain't never had it so good. You know that? <laughs> you wear your big old hat when you go out. That's a crown, son. Everywhere I went through, you know I had the hat on. You keep that going. You know who messed it up on it? I said, who messed it up? John F. Kennedy with that pretty hair. <laughs> All the presidents wore big old hats when they went out. And to John F. Kennedy, pretty self came. He helped a lot of black people, but he messed up the hat game. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's my daddy. That's your daddy. I yeah, love I it. Love that's it. an OG right there. Yeah. When you left the music industry, how did you how did you land in, 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 in radio? And when did you know that, okay, I'm about to take this life of, like, God, yeah. like all the way. Like, what was that transition like from you? Did something happen where you're yeah. like, oh, I can't, I can't do this no more. Man, I was in LA and we I had a deal with Warner Brothers, uh-huh. Rashawn. Yeah. It's a really beautiful story how we got that deal with Warner Brothers. Shout out to DJ Quick, Quick, if you watch it. Oh, I love Quick. I'm P Dub. Because he, he'll probably look like, that's P Dub. P Dub over there talking about Jay. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, he wouldn't even, <laughs> even know. Like, a lot of people don't know that I was pretty willy. A lot of people don't know that the records that they had their babies by was built by the guy that they now say hallelujah to. It's really unique how God can switch you up and nobody know. I'm actually trying to bridge the gap between both of them worlds because we just got the, the rights back to my old music, so go stream Come on, Praise come on, Lord. rights. Abba! Hey! Y'all did I get that? You did good. It's fine. You did good. Okay, okay, Praise the Lord. You know, motherfucker swim team. Yes, see, you came up from this day. But when I... I was really out in Warner Brothers, like I like I failed horribly with my Universal deal. Nelly sold thirty million records. I sold thirty total. Thirty records. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight. Ten. Let's count it tens for time. Nine, 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 twenty, twenty, thirty. Total. Thirty records. Thirty. That's about Are all I Are you serious? Are you giving me just a little? Just for, I mean, for might the as TV? well be. Might as well have been okay. 30. Then nobody buy into the life of Suella. They didn't buy it. I would be at a different place right now if y'all would have went and bought that record that you say you love so much 20 years later. So it's 20 years later in March, last March. And it's like, yo, we just love that album. It was so good. Don't you hate that? Mm-hmm. I was like, you should have bought it then if you thought you loved it so much. <laughs> But I'm out in there. I got this song called Lay Your Body Down. It's blowing up. I got this song called Four Walls. So I'm in the South killing them. But ain't no social media. So everybody in St. Louis, because me and Nelly had a little issue. I ain't had never met him. But it's like camp for camp in St. Louis. You know how to camp on right, this right. side, U City, Berkeley. Nelly was rich. I should have shut my mouth, to be quite honest. I ain't shut my mouth till I seen his earring at the Grammys in like 2000 something. Right. Nelly walked past me. That boy had a whole light bulb in his ear. <laughs> you remember them next tail phones, yes, Rashawn? Yes. I chirped my boy. What you chirping? Bro, we need to leave him alone. He got a big old light bulb in his, his ear. ear. These white people love Nelly. We need to leave him Listen. alone. And so I I'm, was I look, black people down, down, down baby. baby. Yes, oh, they love him. Listen. But you love him. We think he the guy from U City. They the Beatles. Like, during that time, like, they're the Beatles. And we don't know until I go to the Grammys. The hood ain't get a chance to go. I did. I was like, Nelly just came out the air. They flew him in in the air. We need to leave the same lunatics alone, y'all. We never so, going to make wait. it. So you weren't signed to the same I was signed to the same company. Same that company. They left. Oh. And they got beef with the company. Ah. And who's the new artist? You! 30 records later. Yes! Yes. Damn it. You made it, though. You did all right, friend. You did all right. So I just started that independent game, entrepreneurship. Right. Mm-hmm. I started taking the uh, Master P thing, and I just started doing club days. So I'm doing like 30 grand a, 30 grand a weekend. Oh, come on. Early 2000s. I'll take that now. But we, you know, we really drinking, women, we, I got the, I got, you know, you got to have a security, an entourage, got to pay everybody. Um, I'm not paying them enough. Found a pound of weed in the excursion. I'm like, y'all selling weed at the show? It was really, really terrible. Had to fire those guys. Um, <laughs> uh, you trying to kill me? My dream, you know? Right. Um, but I go. I ventured to Los An- Los Angeles. Signed with Warner Brother Records. Um, opening up for DJ Quick. Quick on P Dub. So 
If somebody asks you about Willie Moore Jr., don't say you don't know him. It's P Dub. You remember Hood, the security guard? I was the little one he used to make open up for you. I probably didn't have a beard. Because I just don't want nobody to try to get receipts. My name different is Willie Moore Jr. Like I never knew him and it go viral like I'm lying. Like But check, we, we know you're not lying. Yeah, check Everything's my receipts. Everything's fine. It's, yeah. So it's I'm good. so I'm literally outside one night and I'm smoking. Mm -hmm. And I don't really smoke weed, but I always hit it towards the end of the blunt. So <laughs> I'm outside high as a test pilot. Right. I got, I know how much money I got in my pocket. I got right. 7,500 because right. I'm about to go buy some tomorrow because that's when you have cash. And, I, and I'm outside. I don't know why I started talking to God high. And I tell the Lord, I was like, thank you for giving me everything that I thought I, that I wanted. Like I just left performing at the House of Blues. In LA on sunset, I look down, I see a white Rolls Royce, and it's this, it's this young kid who just came to LA. I look down and I say, Chris. And he was like, What's up? I said, Damn, boy, Chris gonna blow up. And this is kid Chris Brown. Right. I remember, he's, go he's ahead. He's 14 years old. I know. Yeah. And um, I hear the Lord say, Your way or my way? Like an audible voice, not like, like literally I hear, Kr your way or my way. And I walk in and what they said was I just started prophesying and talking because I seen this vision of me going up this elevator and then the floor dropped out and then we just kept falling and falling and falling and we would all be hurt. And then next day I just made a decision in my heart and said the stupidest prayer ever. I said, Lord, if this ain't for me, like just take it away because I ain't strong enough. They giving me a stipend. I got this new record on radio called Sex in the Daytime with this dude named Darrell Babs, mm -hmm. AKA Tank. And we about to oh. blow up. Me, him, we going to take our shirt off. I got it all in my head how we finna win. And um, about three weeks later, Warner Brothers called and said, we're going in a different direction. But shout out to Naeem Ali. I love you, man. Like, he literally gave us all the money out of our fund, which was roughly a quarter of a million dollars. I gave that to, you gave some to my producers so they can live in L.A. I took that money back to um, St. Louis. And I started going to church. I really just started getting more than I bargained for. And because I got saved, people started putting me on church stages. and uh, To talk about your story. Just tell my story. And uh, here we yeah. are. Yeah. The Willie Moore Jr. show. Yeah. Flat out. Flat out. Where did flat out come from? St. Louis, that's what we say. So if you say, hey, Willie, come pick me up, I can say no. And then you'll be like, Will, come on. I'm like, bro, no, I ain't coming. Flat out. That's like the period at the end of the sentence. Oh, got it. No, no, My kids say flat out. That I mean, said, they said, Mama, who you got on the show today? I was like, Willie Moore Jr. They were like, flat out. Flat Literally, out. they said that this morning. Flat out. I'm sorry, kids. I think I said the N word three times and maybe so, a damn listen, I, I want them to see you. Okay, I want them to see God. who you are. Yeah. And I love for my children to see who I am, like fully. Because yeah. I'm flawed in a mug, dog. Yeah. Flawed. But you look like you're healing so good, though. <laughs> Yeah, I like, When I seen your back, I was like, she was going through something at this point. Did y'all see? When Sean started working out, like, that's the first indication that somebody get their life together. When, when they, they start posting them gym pictures, I'm like, yeah, they going to a higher self. Higher self. They going to a higher yeah, self. Yeah, I got to get back to her, but I will. Because yeah. I just been having a great time. When the world opened back up, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, boy, Shouta is out here living her life. Yeah. I'm having a great time. So, Willie, you have been through a lot. Yeah. Your entire life. Um, and recently, you know, very personal things have, have um, happened uh, that have been in the forefront, but not. Yeah. Um, how are you doing? Like, really, how are you doing with everything that's going on in your personal life? Two years ago, I could honestly say I was not doing good at all. Like, it was tough. Like, I look back at those videos and I was like, why would y'all hire me to do stuff? <laughs> this was stupid. Like, even when I was looking at Kingdom Business, um, a beautiful show, did really well, did my lines. Me and Yol Yolanda Adams had a beautiful moment um, in the show. My first day on the job, like, we're straight, like, arguing and going back and forth. And it was just a beautiful banter. Like she's an amazing actress, but I look at that show and I see that I had no life in my eyes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, Oh my God, I was just going so going through so much. Um, you know, for me, once I got healed, I started setting borders for myself and I started to not perform. And I started saying, Hey, there's some things that I may not necessarily want to do. And I made a strong decision for myself. And I decided, you know, that the best version of myself may be outside of my home. Mm. 
Mm. And I decided to, you know, you know, do, you know, walk away and do my best to financially still take care of anything that I had to take care of, do my best to be a great father in the midst of it all. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tug of war. When you adopt it, your biggest goal is family. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you want to to show this. I grew up with two parents who have been married for 50 years. I never seen separation in my life. The only time I seen them separate, it probably one time my daddy had came in there and said the wrong thing. And she said, Joe ass sitting on the couch tonight. Yeah. That's about the longest separation I'd ever seen. Um, but after a year of separation and then a year of, um, you know, going through these different proceedings or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. it's been two years. I can honestly say that I, I thank God for that season that I was in. I went through depression. I went through anxiety. I know what suicidal thoughts look like. Really? I connect with men on a way that I never, ever, ever, ever connected with them. Um, and I think, you know, now I realize it was the most courageous and brave move I've ever made in my adult life. You made the move? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, blame me. And that's the hard part because, you know, it's like you, you know, when you make the decision, like if somebody leave, you were just like, Shawty, you left me. Right. And I could make my R&B songs. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. you left me and right. I'm hurt. You can do right. it, right? right? But when you make a decision and you see the hurt and the pain and the anguish that that a lot of people go through because of your personal decision, but deep on the inside, when you know that for the version that you see in your heart and your head, this is the, this is the, this is the, the road less traveled. And then, of course, all the the families that we've blessed with our testimonies and lives or what yeah. have you, um, you often think about that. Um, but I will say that this journey has been the hardest, but probably I'm most aware in this moment because I'm not performing. And I'm wow. in the midst of it. I found I found who who you I are, was. Yes. Like I found out who I was. Yeah, and I think that yeah. at times the society makes us feel like we're supposed to be, you know, certain things. But then, and also I think society makes us feel like um, being selfish is a bad thing. Yeah. Did you feel like you had to be selfish to be better as you became this version of who you are? I think don't self- don't make selfish a bad thing. I don't yeah. want you to make selfish yeah. a, a negative thing though in this question. G- g- great stop cuz I wouldn't call it necessarily selfish. I just developed into a person. Like I like I did 2 years of counseling before I met my brother. Holy Spirit told me that I was going to meet my biological family. And I was like, "Well, I tried one time and she did." You know. And he, and he told me to meet my brother and so I wanted to be the best version of myself for my brother and my daughter. And don't it ain't really spooky or whatever. If you ask God for wisdom, he'll give it to you earnestly. It's in the book of James. Like, all you got to do is ask. I don't do Bible as a history lesson. I do it as a roadmap. And so I was like, God, I need wisdom on what's next. And he told me, I felt in my heart, like, it's time to go to counseling because I'm about I'm about to add people to you. And I wanted more tools than performance. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I wanted to not be, hey, everybody, anybody want food? You got any bills you need to get take care of? I'll do whatever you need to do. Like, I wanted to be able to set strong borders. And when I went through counseling, it's important if you're married that y'all go to counseling together so y'all can grow together. I would think my big, I think my biggest mistake was that like I started going to counseling and then every day, I, every, every week I was just growing, 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 growing. And not that she wasn't By growing, yourself. still a beautiful woman. She was growing physically, becoming who she needs to be in her own journey. But I was growing mentally to get tools to deal with trauma, drama and trauma fogs. But once that fog is out, like I can see everybody. So without these glasses, I noticed you know, them edges hitting the way they're supposed Preach. to. Yeah, come on. You better mm-hmm, do it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But with the fog, the edges look great, but not as great as they did without the fog. Mm. And so everything didn't look as great to me. I was like, we, you know, we need to do some different things. I wow. think that we should move in this direction. And, and I'm not the type of guy who, like when God gives me something, I'm not the type of guy who rushes to it, but I never forget what I'm supposed to do. So I'm always coming up with strategic ways on how we get to what I seen for the family or for the business or whatever. Cause I got to deal with different, like, I don't just, like, if I want to do this, I would say, okay, we're going to do this, but we're going to do this next year. So I'll start maturing the team and they don't even know where we're going. I'll start maturing the family. I'm about to write a book. I'm about to do a documentary. I know it's going to come out. So I'm maturing the family. So when I was attempting to mature, the fog was off and I started to think like, it shouldn't be this hard. Mm. And then I start seeing things differently. So Yeah, you, you know, know and then the thing see. is, you know, because we're such fans of not just you, but the entire, 
you know, family and this aesthetics yeah. of it, yeah. you know, um, we feel like, oh man, yeah. damn, really? I remember yeah. making a call like, hey man, it's something going on that I don't know about, yeah. about you, yeah. um, to a friend. And, um, they were like, yeah, it's been, it's been happening for a minute. And, yeah. and, and so, you know, it was tough for me as a, as a fan of love. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah. And, and that was the thing for me. Like, I thank God for his grace because I would not be able to do this a year ago or two years ago. So everything seems so now, but like God was so graceful to allow me to heal through it all. Right. And now so, be able to talk. And like totally it. forgive myself first. Yeah, yeah. And able to forgive anything that she may have done that may have offended me that she may not necessarily. Or what you may have done to, to yeah. offend her. Absolutely. And what I did, you know, because I know I offended her and it was tough. But I understand now that God wants me to do it now. Because I'm just meeting so many people who are going through it, but didn't take the route that I took, mm -hmm. the route of therapy, the route of waking up every morning, getting into the word of God. Like some people, you know, they they alcoholics right now, like they they back on that substance or whatever they are. Some people just hoes. They just out. <laughs> you know right. I mean? I'm Men just and like, women. I'm like, bro, like what you doing? Like we, well, I'm just we out here, but I'm just free. Man, really? I just, man, I need somebody, I need company. Like it was so hard for me to sit into my condo by myself. I realized like I ain't never really watched movies. Like I took me out to dinner the other night. We had me and me had a good time. What y'all were talking about? Child, we were talking about. <laughs> child, child, we were talking we about, everything. Talk about everything. And, and just you know, thinking about the new ideas, thinking about these strategic ways. To my son, he's in college. I'm sharing that experience with him. He go to my same college, I and I, it. I was so at practice, I never had a chance to enjoy it. Um, I just realized I was not enjoying life, and it was not because I couldn't enjoy life. But I was just on the grind, you know, and, uh, you know, shout, you know, shout out to Trish. Love you to life. I remember one time she asked me, like, how much do it take? Mm. And I was just like, nah, it's just, you know, for real, it's just sport. I made some really great decisions in my life, but I just I was, you know, I was running for myself mm. and I took I took some time to slow down and I got a chance to meet him. And I really like him. Nice. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, gonna really like him too. Yeah, you know, oh, I can on, tell, man. baby. Got I the like hat him. on and the jacket. On, you love like you, honey. He cool. You he cool. He cool to the most. Huh? Yeah. Um, you became a member of Cap Alpha Psi at did you did you pledge your Ole Miss? I did Fall 99. Come on, 99. Fall 99. You know, it's still some things with our process. Like, you know, the, you know. We, you ain't gotta yeah, get into it. We're yeah, keeping we it above it board in. here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But shout out to the brothers of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. I'm looking forward to um next year. We got something special that's probably gonna happen. Um, no, 2025. Um, I always wanted my my card to say Lambda Pi. So, you know, yeah. prayerfully that, that card to say Lambda Pi. Absolutely. Yep. I'm grateful for you being here. What's next for Willie Moore Jr.? Man, number one, you know, I always do things in God family business. Uh -huh. So number one, um, with my relationship with God, like it's so dope last night. Like I pray before I go in anywhere and I'm just like, God, do you got a word for anybody and give me a strategic way to do it? Um, and so last night, so many people just were blessed with what God had to say. So I just want to get to know him a whole lot more. Like this new regiment that I got with him, he just been dropping his glory. Like when I go talk, I went in church yesterday. Like I was in a in a group of millionaire entrepreneurs teaching them strategic consistencies on how we were able to build business through our courses, through Facebook, through Instagram, through videos. And they were so I intrigued. need to take your course. Can we just follow up with each other? There's no reason I shouldn't be a millionaire right Come now. Come on, man. You no, got there's it. There's no reason. You got it. Oh my God. You am I talking it. like this? They smell it on you. They smell it on you. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, it's not millionaire just liquid cash. Like you do things to invest and when you look at your portfolio, it should have multi-millions in it because you black and you in Atlanta. Like, this the this and the I, mecca. And I'm really good at what I do. And you hella good at what you do. Let me just say this. Yes. I do what you do uh -huh. and I'm looking at your questions. I know we're talking about what's next with Willie Moore. Let me just hear him say this. Right. The way you ask questions are so freaking precise. Thank it's, you. It, no disrespect because I don't know who your mentors and who your people you adore, but it is so Oprah now. <laughs> Thank you. Because Oprah asks questions that make you talk. Right. <laughs> my thing is I get in my own way. So if I ask the same question, you said, what's next for Rashawn Ali? I would say, you know, Rashawn, I've seen you do this show and this mm -hmm. show and so many different shows. Like, what does Rashawn Ali see herself in the next five years? Like, do you, and I will give you things that I see versus right. just shutting up. Uh -huh. And I'm watching the skill set, and you don't know that I'm learning right now. What? I got CC Winers in just a minute, and I'm finna do the Rashawn Ali. Okay? <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I think I got CC in two Come on, CC. It's almost like she Jesus. You can't do that with like whatever we got on our breath. But y'all pray for me. Oh my God, um, it's fine. Just brush your teeth. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you have. I'm gonna brush my teeth. It's fine. Everything's um, good. There's, I think it's a, a Zoom. Perfectly. I just sit. It's everything's great. No yeah. worries. But no, next you know next next year you you gonna see my son. Um, he's 19 years old at the University of Mississippi. Um, he's gonna work in the front office of an NFL team. Um, but he's also going to keep building our real estate brand. And uh, of course, he has a mentorship program right now. Um, and he's already grossed some amazing. Yeah. He's paid for his college on his own. Oh, that's you beautiful. know what I mean? Um, I say I pay for it because it sounds better in media. But I work this boy on social media and I'm showing him how to do it. And, uh, you know, he's paid for his college on his own. And he's about to do a scholarship for some kids going in June for college and all that. Just a good kid. Um, and then my 14 year old, he's creative. He's going to do a lot of amazing things. He's a very smart kid, very inquisitive kid. Um, it hurt him the most with our separation. It was the, yeah, it was the hardest yeah, for him because, yeah. you know. It's always a, it's always one baby that's going to yeah. take it the hardest, yeah. But he the guy. Like, he the guy. And I'm excited about what he's going to do. Um, I think he's going to do a lot of things in media. He's going to do really good. Um, my seven-year-old, he's going to work very, very close to me. Um, you, you will probably see him managing different arms of our different brands before he's 14 years old. I love it. Um, and then my baby girl just don't matter. Like she can just, she can do gonna, whatever. She can just she's wake gonna up. Throw people she can just wake and up. Smack people. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to do movies. I'm going to do television, but I'm really interested in being behind the camera, creating these stories that can transform the world. Yeah. Um, I got my feet wet with my documentary. Um, and did now, you use my little spot? I don't think you I used. Did. You did. I did. Thank I you. did okay. use a little spot as yeah. long as it was on YouTube. Lawyers let me know that it was okay. Okay. And, good. Um, I didn't use the spot when you did the when video. I did the piece, right. Right. But I used your spot when you were on the thing. Oh, okay. Good. I'm sorry. No worries. It was we're timing. gonna work together. I'm not worried oh, about timing. it. We're gonna do. But movies you was together. on there. But we're gonna do movies together. I, oh. Did I tell you that? In Jesus' name. I, I mean, okay, it's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't do no, that. No, no. Why are you apologizing? Because usually I call people and be like, Your Listen, pot, I know hey, how things work. Spot didn't make I have ended up on the cutting board so many times. Yeah. No worries. Boop. But guess it what? It was Reese's fault, by the way. <laughs> it, was, it was Reese, Reese the fault. editor. No worries. He was like, man, we need, I need to tighten this one up. But no um, worries. you could have took good, me man. out that part that it's I don't okay, like. It's okay, But Willie. anyway. Promise. Um, but no, we're going to produce films. Um, we're going to be doing foster homes all across the country. Certified Will Flow Homes. Um, they really, really dope when a kid gets... Um, taken out of his primary home and they end up um, in foster care. They're going to come to our homes and they're going to look at these vaulted ceilings. They're going to look at this beautiful granite. They're going to look at these beautiful rooms that are well kept. They're going to look at these parents who have been prepped the willy and floor away. Um, and these people ain't really searching for money. They're going to make money every single month for taking care of my children. Um, and we're going to have foster homes all around the world. And, uh, you know, I'm going to rub elbows with the, you know, with the president and all the rest of them. Like, they got to have some type of kingdom influence that understands African-American people like where we come from. In our experience. Yeah. yeah. I don't go in the boardroom and act like I was just talking to Vice President Harris. Like, I don't go in and pretend like I'm something that I'm not. I speak for the neighborhood when I walk in and that's what they appreciate. Yeah. Because yeah, we- I could be Ole Miss if you want me to. But I don't, I don't perform when I'm in front of decision making. You don't perform anymore. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. I still perform. On last night I was performing, <laughs> I had to get out of there, Rashad Ali. I had to get out of that thing. Yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, y'all are too friendly. Let me get out of here. Call my car. Get them around here. Yeah, I got to get out of here. I left for an hour and 20 minutes early. Listen, you got to know. You got to know. Well, Willie, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. I I appreciate this. Um, I I appreciate you being open and vulnerable and just everything that I imagined you would be for Mm -hmm. this, in this space. Yeah. You far superseded it so thank you I appreciate you thank you for the opportunity yeah. cool soul roll yeah podcast yeah, thank out. you I appreciate it right. my man Willie Moore Jr everybody can we show him some love yeah I love this space yes it's a beautiful thing baby uh uh-uh. uh